Hey, welcome back to Lasco Ford. This is the 2021 Mustang Mach-E. And not just any Mach-E, this is a first edition premium four-wheel drive that we're gonna be showing you today. And we're gonna talk about this car quite a bit because there's so many technology advancements on this vehicle, along with performance that really blows a lot of the competition out of the market. And really, there isn't a whole lot of competition. You'll see what I'm talking about here shortly. First of all, it doesn't look like a lunchbox, like all these other horrible electric vehicles that give you zero design quality out of them and are absolutely as boring as it gets. Guess what? It looks like a Mustang because it is a Mustang. It's a different version of it. Even this, see? Check that out. I'm unlocking the door with a sequential turn signal LED, daytime running lamps that not only run through here, they run and separate in between your LED high beams, and those are auto high beams for your low beam, your high beam, all your LEDs up here, and then coming around up front, well, guess what? Again, not boring. Well, it's got an awesome Mustang that's galloping through, and they redesigned this to give it more of that electric feel because it is an all electric vehicle. Now, you can take a look down below at the front bumper as well. And our active grill shutters that we always point out are typically behind where your grill is. Well, there isn't really a grill except for these and they will open and they'll shut. But in the middle, why it doesn't go across the whole center front part of this vehicle is, well, because it's got adaptive steer or adaptive cruise control and it's got your radar, your sensing for lane keeping system that you're gonna see on cameras that are located up here. So that's gonna be lane keeping system, lane centering system, and Ford saying within the next six months to a year, this literally is gonna be a pretty much a hands-free car will be able to drive you. So wait for that to come. That's definitely gonna be something that we're gonna see. We got piano black accents on the bottom lip. We've got that around that front surround as well on that bumper as we come through and see these absolutely beautiful non-hybrid looking rims on this vehicle because everything else looks like a fan blade. This thing is looking a lot better. Like, thanks for stepping up to the table with a beautiful set of Michelin tires wrapping out this huge rim, which typically you're not gonna find 19s and big wheels on a hybrid car. Not to mention significantly bigger brakes. That reminds you of that Mustang, they're painted red in color on the caliper itself. But we're gonna show you where the charging port is even a fender flare, which you know I'm more of a truck guy, you know how that goes, but here at Lasco Ford, we're gonna give you all the options. Now this is where we plug in horsepower. And the cool thing about that is, it literally says horse power right here with a galloping Mustang up top. Well, great pun, I like it. Let's keep moving on, I didn't shut that good enough. But when you're gonna walk up to the Mustang too, you're gonna notice just a little indention down here, and that's gonna be your camera on the side of your mirror that's gonna be painted to match as well with blind spot awareness. Down below is where you're gonna see the Mach-E 4X, so Mach-E four wheel drive on this vehicle. Piano blacks included, you know, from the front wraps around the bottom side of your lower rocker panel, giving you that higher look. So if you actually step back, the vehicle looks like it sits up a bit higher. Well, it's only an inch and a half higher than a Mustang GT that you'll get with a big throaty V8 five liter in it. So do you have this, the handling, the performance? Yes, you do. You got a little bit more ground clearance of what you're gonna have in the Mustang. And now you got four wheel drive, giving you better capability. Going to the driver's door, you're able to light this up, enter in a custom code to unlock the door, or if you're close enough with a key, you simply hit this button, here's your door handle. It never moves, it doesn't hurt anything for wind and aerodynamics, because that mirror, it curtains the air over the top of it, and then we're able to open and shut the door. We're gonna look at the interior in just a minute, I don't wanna spoil the surprises. So now if you do the same thing on the back side here, you'll notice there's no door handle at all. Well, Ford put in this rubber piece behind the door, this is gonna be where your soft touch is to be able to open your vehicle, right? So Ford noticed when customers were opening the door, they weren't even reaching for anything. You simply hit the button. The other thing is on this now, you can't push it shut. So what they're doing there is you can't push it shut. You do have to open it just a bit in order to release where you've got the ability to then shut it. So what does that do? That helps you from a strong wind pinching your fingers in the door or having that issue that could potentially arise. I'm so used to showing you where a gas tank would be here on the other side, you don't have that. Body lines, we gotta talk about this where it's all painted. Beautiful body line that comes through and that gives it that sleek hatchback style that you saw in the late 60s and the fastbacks in the 70s. This is actually painted up higher, a full black surround on the roof with a humongous panel up top. I mean, massive. Wait till you see inside. We're gonna show you that. Shark fin antenna for all of your communication for HD radio, satellite radio, all gonna be drawn in right through there. Now on the top, you're gonna have that 
huge LED tail light that's gonna be popped up here for your center high mount stop lamp. You do have a windshield wiper, which is not common on a regular Mustang. This is the Mustang Mach-E. They carry that same symbol of that electric Mustang running, galloping through with right here, your, rever your uh, rear view camera. Now you can open the vehicle by hitting unlock or pressing this button twice to do a power lift. Well, just like the other Mustang, you're gonna also have a button down below where you're able to lift as well, soft touch here with LED puddle lights too. Now this is pretty cool. So this, you can hook on, and this is gonna be your tonneau cover to cover whatever goods that you have in the back. But the cool thing is it is flexible. So if you put in something like, you know, a piece of luggage, groceries, what have you, it's actually able to conform a bit to be able to, to still cover that up without having to remove it, fold it up, roll it up, put it away. Now we take the, the mats out of here and you have a two layer trunk inside of this vehicle too. So we'll show you that real quick. And just put away some of this paper and literature. So when you pull this towards you, you can roll it down underneath those two latches there. And now the trunk can recess a bit further down, giving you even more room. So when we pull this out all the way, so let's look underneath what's in the Mach-E, in the trunk. Well, you're gonna have not only an inflation kit, because we're gonna save weight by not having a spare tire, you're also gonna have, what you see there is the charging cord system. Now you've got two different ones. One is gonna be charging out of the 220, and then you have the home cord as well. So you're gonna have two different setups, charging between 21 to 30 miles per hour is what your range charge is gonna be. So that's gonna be how you're gonna kind of judge what you really need to use. Now, this vehicle having roughly that 300 miles, very similar to what you're gonna see with Tesla in a couple of their models as well. They've got us beat by like 25 miles. Well, the cool thing is the average person typically drives about 40 miles a day. And yeah, I mean, you got 300 miles, but we've gotta look at other things. Like on our Ford Pass, we have all the different places where you can charge this vehicle, but not only that, Think about the 3,500 Ford dealerships that you're able to charge the vehicle at as well at no charge. Think about that. So charged at no charge. I love it. Not to mention service. Well, yeah, I mean, come to Michigan, try and get your Tesla service in Michigan. You're gonna be on a tow truck, I promise you that. So look at the back of this. You get the three sequential taillights, so when you do hit that turn signal, and you know what, I'm just gonna turn it on. And I gotta turn the turn, just do it. Just turn the turn signals on, would you? Just send it all the way. <coughs> So that is a sequential turn signal. And it is, it's super quick. It's a lot faster than the standard Mustang, but you still have your brake lights up top, LED all throughout. You know it's gonna be LED when it's coming to Ford and the electric technology that they're bringing to the table. Let's take a look at the inside. I'm gonna open this door and I'll talk to you through the other side so our camera guy can get in there too. <clears throat> Things that I like, I adjusted the seat all the way back on uh, the driver's side here. So I'm gonna move that forward just a little bit. And I'll show you where, me at five foot eight, where I'm gonna be sitting. Because you're gonna have this contoured seat here, right? So you got the contoured seat. These are super squishy. They're super comfortable. And the, it's like when you touch it, it is just so much more soft than what you would expect. Like it's luxurious to like the next level for sure. On the back side, you've got this active X material as well. Take a look up here, because the whole roof is glass. Blew the metal right out of it. Let's do all glass, everything. Like, this thing is so awesome. Talk about being able to see anything. I mean, trees, like if you go through tunnel of trees, you go through you know, North Carolina and you're on the tail of the dragon, you go up to the UP and you see these beautiful different sunrises, sunsets. I mean, just think about it. You know, To enjoy a vehicle like this, you're gonna enjoy nature a lot more when you can see it. So you do have center console here with uh, two cup holders. You've got lightning USB here. You've got the bigger USB there as well. We have heat and air coming from underneath the floor and also from the backside of the console. Take a look at the doors themselves. Because on the door, that door jam itself, or not the door jam, but the door handle where you're resting your arm, all supple, soft, stitched leather with a Bang & Olufsen sound system. Bang & Olufsen. Bang & Olufsen should just have a definition and a new you know, catchphrase of, literally blissfully going deaf and enjoying every note and tune as you continue to do that. Cool things that you're gonna have with this though too is on your Ford Pass application, when you actually get your Ford Pass app, this thing is unreal. Oh my God, it's like, I'm sweating heavily. This is, this is so cool. Because once you get your Ford Pass app, 
you'll be able to pull out your phone, not just lock and unlock your vehicle and remote climate start your vehicle because you're not starting anything. You're just literally starting the, the climate system in the vehicle, but you can roll up your windows, roll down your windows. You can go through like, oh yeah, this is first edition by the way. So it's going to be, I mean, it's the baddest, newest thing that's out there. I mean, I don't even really know how you want to describe that other than, oh my God, look at it. 15.5 inches. I didn't think it could get any bigger, but you know, Ford is even talking to their customers and going, hey, we don't want just a giant touch screen and just one because we do want to still be able to see where's our charging, you know, where's my miles per hour, park reverse, neutral drive, because we're so used to seeing it. Ford said, okay, let me listen to the customer and put this heads up display for you. So guess what? Now you have one. And this isn't getting crazy going, hey, here's 95 different ways to configure your dash. It's really not like that. It's just going to go, hey, here's your charge amount. Here's your miles on the vehicle. Here's how fast you're going. You know, here's your range of expected life left. Put your foot on the brake and start this puppy. Let's get it, get it out there and running. Cool thing that I like too is if you notice on the back side of this, this is one continuous speaker that wraps itself all the way down the dash to the passenger side above your glove box. Really gave it that Mustang look of the old school vents that are in here too with that carbon fiber type of weave and that stainless steel pattern. I don't, I mean, it's really cool. Tons of space inside of this vehicle as well and more USB. Okay, well, we've got that here. We've got storage underneath. I could tie Jay's shoes if I could reach under there, right? But now here, um, I'll tell you this much too, is if you set your phone right there, it will literally start charging your phone for you as well. I'm 56%, there you have it. So other things, we got glove, we got our, uh, we've got our cup holders here. We've got a console that's gonna have a rolling open door. Still plenty of room inside of this. So one other thing that you're gonna notice too is if I turn the steering wheel slightly, what is this right here, right? Well, this is gonna be where a camera focuses to you to make sure that a driver is paying attention. So you're going, you know, lane keeping system, lane centering system for you as well, you know, on this active 2.0, um, co-pilot assist, right? So not only is it going to have all of these functions, perpendicular park assist, parallel park assist, it keeps on coming. There's so many hits. This thing is like literally the hall of fame of Mustangs. I mean, they just keep coming, stitching through the steering wheel, your, your black accents all the way through on the three spokes that are on, on here as well. They continue that stitching throughout the dash as well. Let's play with this giant touchscreen. Oh boy, this ought to be fun, right? A little intimidating. Things that you'll notice, first of all, we have a volume knob. Nana, nana, nana. Well, Ford, you know, literally was listening to customers saying, listen, we don't want to just tap and touch. And yes, you can use your steering wheel as a redundant control, but if you turn the stereo on, it'll illuminate. It flashes outside of this too. So hold on. You turn my heated seat. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mine's on too. I'm dying. So if you adjust it, notice how my finger just left too. So, hot. so watch this. <laughs> watch. If I move my finger off, I can still adjust it. So that's just to turn it off. So you're not having to pay as much attention is to just touch and go, right? That's, they just really want you to pay attention there. So even our fan speed, if we go up on our fan speed, I can go off of the screen and still be able to raise that up. That's super cool, isn't it? So you start looking at other things like where I can swipe is right in the middle of the screen. We're gonna go up here to our audio controls. We can expand and we can contract screens as well from up top. Now up here, and you won't notice this unless we're actually in drive. Uh, let me see if I can put her in drive real quick. So when we're in drive, if we touch the Mustang up above, it's gonna tell us about our drive modes, right? So if we touch what our drive modes are, it's gonna be engaged, which is gonna be the middle of the road, right? Still gonna have all the power for you, but it's gonna be quiet about it as well. Whisper, Whisper is gonna be totally optimizing your fuel economy and well, your, your, your range economy, I guess I should say. It's not even about fuel at this point. Our fuel is our charge. Unbridled, well, of course, they're going to have some crazy Mustang terms inside of this. This is letting this puppy free. Now, when you see these, you're going to see that continue on over here. Once we're in drive and we start moving the vehicle, you're going to actually see that same design go through as you speed up the vehicle through your heads up display here. So there is a lot of technology that's inside of this vehicle. We can go to different camera options. Oh my God, I mean, good Lord, look at this thing. So we can go to a bird's eye view camera up here. We can change that to your, your 180 view. So you're not just getting the front, you're getting the front and the sides. And we've got our doors open. So that mirror is, or this is actually coming through. When we do our 360, if my door is open, you can see that up here. It's so big, it's like you have two large monitors, one on the bottom, one on the top. Yeah, yeah. It's two widescreens. 
I mean, it's, it's so, the crazy thing is it's like, it's already wider than a normal screen up top. And then they just doubled it up. And well, they doubled down is really what they did because they put another one right here for you. But it's all voice activated as well. So going through here, and I say all, most, okay, so don't, 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 you know, please make a comment on, on how much you didn't like that comment I just made. But, you know, here's what it is at the end of the day. You can go through and you can do voice for things like climate, voice for things like uh, going through your stereo stations, voice for navigation, a lot of different options that you can use inside of this vehicle to make it comfortable and not make it something where it's got to be intimidating and super complicated. It might take a little getting used to, but if you're used to your phone, all of this can pretty much be ran off your phone and that Ford Pass app. Now, Ford is calling it a P-A-A-K, phone as a key. So your phone is going to be your key. When you open up your phone, you're able to go over to your Ford Pass app here and be able to put the vehicle on your Ford Pass simply by scanning the barcode when you're an owner. Now you can leave your key at home, legitimately at home, and still be able to access your vehicle. And what you're gonna do inside of your screen is set up a password. So once the vehicle recognizes your phone, well, what if it doesn't? What if your phone's dead and you went for a 20 mile hike? I went for a five mile run this morning. I could have lost my phone and that was on in the gym. So last thing you wanna do is run out of battery, not be able to access your car. You can put in the door code that we talked about earlier, put in your code into the screen, you're fired up, now you can charge your phone, and the vehicle can still continue to go without a key at all. This is now your key, your phone that you always have on you anyway. Things that I saw people complaining about, and really, I don't know why, because it's a simple two-step process. Ready? This is how we're going to pop the hood. One, two. I had people complain about that going, oh, it's complicated. Well, you know what's complicated? When you don't have a key, and you try and get into the hood and you try and get in your car and your car isn't a Mustang Mach-E so it doesn't have a keyless entry keypad system and you're stuck like Chuck in a Tesla. Whoops. So now all we do, there is no switches or anything I got to grab. That is under the hood. It's the frunk. Oh my God, it's the frunk. <laughs> you know, so if you can trap a small enough person to get inside of this trunk, this is your release and it glows in the dark. I don't think... I've never, I've never, well, please don't put babies in there. I mean, that's the only thing that's going to fit, and that's just not even cool. But right here, that is your uh, windshield washer solvent. It's blue. There you go. That's about all you need to pay attention to underneath the hood, right? I mean, it's super, it's, it, it's so simple. It's, you know, a caveman could drive it, you know, literally. It's so easy. Now, recessed into the hood here, too, is a little bit more room. And that is going to be sealed as well, so don't worry about rain and things along that line. You do have all the proper drainage to not get your stuff soaking wet when it's underneath the hood of the, of the vehicle. This is a secondary trunk. This is just a quick overview. You wait till the GT comes out. Let's talk about a little bit of horsepower before we hang this thing up. <clears throat> this is my notes, right? So this, for example, this being the all-wheel drive with the extended range battery system on this is going to be at um, 346 horse with 428 pound foot of torque. Now, if you do the standard, not extended length, you're gonna, you know, for the battery charge, right? You're gonna be at 266 and 428 pound foot of torque. So same amount of torque, just a little less horse. So the things that I would look at with that is, well, what if they came out with a Mustang GT? Well, they are. And on the Mustang GT reported right now, it's 480 horsepower, 634 pound foot of torque. That's more than the power boost putting out 570 pound foot of torque. I mean, my goodness, this thing's gonna be a rocket ship, but it's also gonna be super comfortable and very, very stable on the road. Now we have this, this vehicle as of today is available for retail sale. You would definitely take in orders. We can deliver this vehicle to any 50 states, no problem there. So give us a call, check our inventory, see what's incoming. We have allocations for them. We'll definitely be shooting a drive along video as well. But look at lascoford.com, that's L-A-S-C-O, Ford.com. Please like and subscribe to make sure that you get our next drive along video and our next walk around as well. My name is Paul Zagman. We appreciate you watching.